When I was little, my Christmas stocking from the very first Christmas that I can remember all through was green knit and oh so soft with a stuffed reindeer head at the top and thick plush rims that acted as arms as if the reindeer was holding up the stocking. I loved that stocking. Getting the Christmas decorations out each year was always incredibly exciting, but it was that stocking that I waited for the most. It would hang on a little knob on the fireplace gate, always on the same side. My sister had one just like mine, but hers had a teddy bear head and it hung on the other side of the gate. And I would get my stocking down almost daily to play with it, along with a few other select toys that were worthy enough to play with this reindeer. Well, one year, when I was about seven or eight, a few days before Christmas, some neighbors came by to visit and they brought their lab puppy with them. I can tell you can sense what's coming. <laughs> I had, of course, been playing with my stocking and I left it on the floor to have some Christmas cookies with the neighbors. And when we went back into the living room a little while later, it was a massacre. The reindeer's head was lying on the floor a foot away from his stocking body. An antler was missing along with an ear and a good amount of stuffing. And the plush arms had holes and the stocking part itself had not fared all that well either. To say that I was devastated is probably an understatement. My world was shattered, Christmas was ruined, and though I got a replacement stocking, was red with candy canes, nothing exciting that late in the season, I was convinced that Santa would not know which stocking was mine and wouldn't bring me anything. Well, Christmas morning came around and some of my excitement crept back in. I was a kid after all. Not every present comes in a stocking. Most are under the tree. And my new stocking was even more full than it had been in past years. And beneath a layer of goodies was my reindeer stocking. It was the same one that I had always had, but all signs of damage had been erased. Now it had beautiful new golden antlers and new velvety ears, and its arms were covered in a sparkly red fabric to mimic sleeves, and there were hearts of that same fabric sewn onto the stocking to patch up the holes. It was more perfect than I could ever have imagined. 2,000 years ago, a baby was born into a community who thought that they had God all figured out. They had their laws and their traditions, and they treasured them. They used them daily to guide their lives, and they looked to them for strength. They were waiting for their Messiah to come, to save them from the ruling authorities, to vindicate them and affirm all they had been doing to serve and honor God. And they knew how he was going to come and what he was going to look like and what he was going to do. And this baby was born and none of those things happened. In fact, to many, it seemed like the opposite. The baby grew up and became a man and the man became a rabbi and the rabbi started teaching and preaching and he got a following, a large following. And his teachings started sounding different like they were maybe going against these laws and customs that the community had cultivated and had relied on and knew was the right and only way to worship God. Hundreds listened to him and understood. They saw that the law that had been handed down to them by Moses was to guide them 
to give them a starting point. Help them to not go astray as they had so many times before. But there were many who didn't understand, who needed the Messiah to come to them with power and glory and strength, to go to literal battle for them and to uphold their laws. They were so fixated on how things had to be that they couldn't see the world transforming around them, transforming into something beautiful and sacred, touched by God. Paul writes this morning about the law and says that through Christ, we are set free from it. I think that perhaps a better understanding of what Paul is saying is that we are set free to experience God outside of it. Our interactions with God, our faith, is no longer limited to the constraints set upon us by a set of laws and traditions. Because what so often happened those many years ago was that the law, which was God's gift to keep his people on track so that they didn't have to worry or wonder how to follow him, over time, that law began to keep people from really knowing him. In order to be good, they had to know the law, not God. And the relationship, the fluidity, the ability to change and grow with God was lost. It's so easy to become stagnant, to box ourselves into one right way of doing things that we miss out on opportunities we couldn't have even dreamed of. It may sound silly, but when I was a kid, my experience of Christmas was all wrapped up in that beloved stocking. When the stocking was gone, I was lost. I didn't know how to fully understand Christmas because the thing that I needed in order for it to happen, in order for it to happen the way I thought it had to happen, wasn't there. And so, when that stocking came back, even more magnificent than I could have imagined, I was freed to let Christmas just be Christmas. And I didn't have the language or the understanding for it then. But I think back on it now and I can see something inside me shifted. And even though I still loved that stocking and I still wanted it and looked forward to it every year, I didn't need it. I had seen that Christmas would still happen. And even more importantly, I had seen that the thing that I had held as perfection could actually be made even better. What are you holding on to? What tradition, ritual, thing do you need in order to feel complete? Identify it. Don't let go of it. But don't let it rule over you. Remember that God comes in unexpected ways, and he often takes the old and transforms it. God has this way of shaking us up when we think we've got it down, of taking away our safety blankets when we think we need them the most, and surprising us with the beauty that comes in place of it all. Christmas isn't over yet. There are still six more days of this season that celebrates God's incarnation, his physical presence in this world. And that's a presence that redefined humanity, that reminds the world that as soon as we think we know how to play the game, the rules change. Just to keep us alert, listening, 
ready for God in whatever way he comes. Now we have spent the past four weeks of Advent getting ready for Christ to come. And now that he's here, the real fun begins. Now you can get ready for him to pull you away from what you think you need, out of your comfort zone, and right into his glory. Amen.